Welcome to another live episode of the Bedley Brothers. We've got a very special guest on today, and Scott is here with me to introduce Alice to you. We are excited to welcome Alice Jen today. She is a, 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 has a list of just certifications from Google Certified. She's a Microsoft Innovative Educator. She's a Q-Lead Learner. She's the co-moderator of the Connected Classroom, and she's doing a lot of things with connecting teachers with each other. Um, she's been selected Teacher of the Year before. She's an uh, ambassador for Schoology. She's, uh, and most importantly, though, she's an eighth grade language arts teacher mm -hmm. by far. Right, Alice? Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. Hey, we're going to get into it right away. Just talk to us about Connected Classrooms. Okay, great. Um, Connected Classrooms is a wonderful program that Google launched last fall. And um, now we're up to over 5,000 members. And the idea is to connect classrooms all around the world. Um, one of the things that, um, that Connected Classroom does is to provide virtual field trips for um, classrooms so that if you want to learn about um, the the Arctic, you can join a Google Hangout um, where the guest speaker is talking about what it's like to live there or work there or, you know, well, not in the Arctic, but like what um, the conditions are. Um, for example, for Martin Luther King Jr.'s um, birthday, uh, my classroom was selected to join a special hangout with Nobel Peace Prize winner um, Lema Bowie and she is a part of this organization called Peace Jam um, in which they identify 10 global issues in the world today. So we had a great opportunity to m meet with her on air. Um, we, we were able to ask her a few questions and she gave us lots of great advice um, and just shared her wisdom with us. Um, that's like one example of what Google Connect a Classroom can do for you. Um, and another time, we were also invited to join a special um, hangout with Secretary Duncan. Um, this aired right after President Obama's um, um, State of the Union address, and he wanted to connect to with the community around the United States and he had a lot of different activities going on that day um, or that week and Secretary Duncan um, was part of this um, program they called Big Block of Cheese Day in which um, the, he was you know inviting different people to talk to him so he, we had a preschool representative and then my students were the middle school representative and he also had two special high school students um, in the hangout. Um, and along with him was the National Teacher of the Year. So my students got to actually present a question to Secretary Duncan, and that was um, truly amazing. Yeah, wow. those experiences are pretty powerful. I mean, to connect with a Nobel Prize winner, that's awesome. And I know, Alice, because I've used the Connected Educator, um, Connected Classroom, to get a chance to be in a Google Hangout with the American Museum of Natural uh, History and talk with some paleontologists that was that was posted on there in that group. Right. Um, could I share the the website? Absolutely. On? Okay. So let me pull that up and click. And while you're doing that, it's it's a great opportunities out there that abound as far as getting a chance to connect with different people. How often do they post things or things posted on the connected classrooms? It's very regular. Um, it's not specifically like how many per week, but it is definitely there are lots of events going on. So um, in this, so let me just share my screen. Um, you're already sharing it. We can see it. Okay, so we have there's some field trips coming up. So for example, well this one passed, um, but you could, you know, learn about, um, you know, the Google Science Fair that's that's launched and if any science teachers out there definitely check out this uh, opportunity for your students to participate. Um, as you can see on February the 27th there was a Black History Month with 
um, Baseball Hall of Fame. So they have a lot of really great, prestigious, um, and well-respected speakers who come on to the show. Um, and here, a Galactic Hangout. If you are ever interested in um, visiting space, Virgin Galactic will take you there. And then they have, you know, lots of different activities posted. This is from the past, okay, and some in the future. Now, are any of these uh, a little? Are they? Are any of them actual on location type of field trips where the kids get to see? things that are going on or are they just pretty much interviews with people? No, they're live. They're um, at the location. So there was one that I um, saw um, in which they did a hangout with, um, I believe it was the Seattle Aquarium and the diver was in the tank um, and you know then the docent was explaining all sorts of things that the diver was doing. So you really do get to see um, the location and what's going on. I, and I believe there was one recently in which someone went on a dog sled ride um, using Google Glass. So you could see through his perspective what that experience was all about. Wow, that's cool. Can you give us uh, maybe just a quick rundown of some of the different opportunities that might be available to teachers, uh, you know, without a uh, full explanation of it, but just some, some quick ideas? Okay, well, so let's take a look at their Google Plus community. Okay, um, and this is how you would join. It is public, um, so you submit a request and you'll be approved almost immediately. And as you can see right now, actually we're up to over 6,000 members. And it's a wonderful way for teachers to connect with each other as well. So over here on the left, if you're interested in a virtual field trip, you can um, see what is available and what's upcoming and sign up for certain events. Here's one, join Polar Bears International and the Google Maps team to learn about the polar bear capital of the world. Isn't that pretty cool? Wow. Um, they also go into, I, I remember seeing one in which they went into a science lab. So that, um, it, you know, it really does cover a range of disciplines. Yeah, and I know the one my class participated in, it was actually in the museum and in the laboratories where the different um, paleontologists were, you know, excavating actual fossils that they had brought back from the uh, Moby Desert. It was really cool. Wow, that's neat. Okay, so these virtual field trips, and then as you can see, you can speak to an Olympian right there. <laughs> um, so that's one of the... Th the things that you can do with connected classrooms, but as you can see over here on the left, there are different ways to connect with other classrooms as well. So if you teach social studies, you might want to post there, if you're arts and music and so on, or by grade level, and then also classroom to classroom, and this is the one that, um, that I moderate specifically. And many teachers are connecting through here. So for example, in this one, Andy Lee, teaches in Anaheim and he's looking for a teacher in the south who wants to um, partner with him to work on a project as they read To Kill a Mockingbird. And here's one from Utah and you know it's just people reaching out all across the world. Here's one from Canada. He's asking uh, if anyone would like to connect through a mystery hangout with his class and as you can see 25 comments. Um, he's you know, there's definitely a lot of traffic here. There's definitely a lot of potential to connect with many other educators from around the world and doing whatever it is that you're passionate about. You know, you can post here and say, hey, I want to work on a global project. Um, or I've seen a teacher who says, you know, we are a Spanish-speaking country. We want to learn or practice our English. So I'm looking to connect with someone there. Or on the reverse, here's, um, you know, they are looking to collaborate 
between Spain and the US. So lots of great opportunities here. That, that's, a, that's oftentimes a question I get too is like, hey, how do you connect with people and what a wonderful venue to do that. Right, and this is a wonderful way to do it. Um, particularly if you're not, you know, a pro at social media, joining this community is like instant connection, instant friendship with these teachers from around the world. That would be yeah. I'm I'm a little social media awkward. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, for our listeners, I, I assume that uh, well, I, I know, but <laughs> they, they probably need to know they they need to join Google Plus community, which is similar to Facebook in order to be a member of this. Uh, it doesn't mean that they have to, you know, go on and post what they had for breakfast and read what everybody else is posting. They can simply sign up using their Google ID, or if they don't have a Google ID, get a Google ID for free, and then uh, just join that community. Isn't that true? Right, right. That's all you need, just a Google account. Cool. All right. Hey, Alice, can you uh, give us just changing subjects here a little bit? What else is going on with Google? Is there anything new happening? you have any uh, cool little tricks or fun things that you can uh, share with our audience? Sure. Um, well, one Google script that I really enjoy using, and I know some people out there um, have discovered it as well, is Doctopus. And um, it is a script created by a Google certified teacher and Google Apps trainer, um, Andrew Stillman. He, um, he is highly respected in the Google teacher, um, Google certified teacher community. And a lot of people who use Google Apps really appreciate what he has created. So essentially, it is a way to issue assignments, files, to your students. It could be a Google Doc, it could be a Google um, slide, you know. So basically you are able to manage all of this within a spreadsheet that you set up with student email. And as you issue it to your students, you have full control over um, the file because you are the owner of that file. Um, it's a great way to manage all the paperwork or electronic paperwork, so to speak, that you uh, might generate in your digital classroom. So on a scale of one to five, how techy do you have to be to use something like that? That's a good question. Um, you definitely have to be comfortable with Google Forms and Google Spreadsheets. So I would say about a three. Um, you know, if you have some experience with forms and spreadsheets, then it will not be very difficult at all. Um, if you don't, you need to kind of learn it a little bit, but once you get the hang of it, it runs very well and very easily. Awesome. Hey, um, if, if we're just talking like ed tech, if you were to like create the ideal classroom, ed tech wise, what, what do you want in that classroom? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I, I asked that because I have a friend who's um, redesigning their school and he's asked, you know, some of us, like, what, what would you imagine that you could put in there? What would you imagine that room like? Right. Well, I hardly ever get to think about that because knowing the limitations of funds, but um, I would definitely love to have floor to ceiling. Um, you know, windows, so natural light can come in, um, lots of different types of tables, um, round tables or square tables, um, some lounging space and area, perhaps like a nice um, sofa or two, um, maybe some a nice rug where your students could, you know, um, hang out, lay out and, watch, and read books or work on projects. Um, you know, in a very relaxed kind of manner. So, but you know, but definitely one-to-one -one devices. Um, definitely great Wi-Fi and mm. uh, you know, great LCD projector. <laughs> I'm going to add something to your vision. How about really good Bose speaker system? <laughs> oh yes, that would be wonderful too. <laughs> and definitely some kind of mobile device where they can create mul um, multimedia too. Cool. Uh, in addition to, you know, a, like a Chromebook or a laptop, but something that lends itself to producing video and other types of multimedia. 
How about some big screen TVs mounted on the wall? <laughs> uh, that's nice, too. <laughs> okay. Or block out the light, Tim. Come on. Man. <laughs> oh, maybe they could be on the ceiling, like at the dentist office. I don't know. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are all laying on the floor looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> so, All right, well... Uh, Alice, thank you so much. It's been very informative. I'm just kind of glued, and uh, you got my gear spinning here on all these uh, things that you've been sharing with us and how I can use that in my classroom. So we totally appreciate your time and coming on the show. Hey, Alice, where can people connect with you really quickly? Sure. Um, you can find me on Twitter. My handle is right there on my lower third, at WonderTechEDU. Um, also, you can find me on Google+. Plus. Um, my shortener is, um, you know, Alice Chen, Wonder Tech Edu. Unfortunately, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't use just my name. Someone else already took it, so I had to add Wonder Tech Edu to it for for my Google Plus. Um, and also on my blog, WonderTechEdu.blogspot.com. Very cool. Hey Tim, tip time, bro. Tip time. Uh, you you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Uh, I got um, handed a, a beautiful gift from a friend up at EdCamp LA, JR, who connected with Amy and led me to Lucid Press. And it is a like an online magazine bro portfolio, I mean brochure, just kind of like this really creative, awesome tool. And my kids are going to be using it to make e-magazines and then they'll be able to publish them. So I'm pretty stoked. Thank you, JR and Amy. Cool. Uh, I'm going to give a, a non-tip today for the first time. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to make somebody mad somewhere because I'm going to unrecommend something. Uh, I just loaded ClassFlow onto my iPad and had all my kids loaded onto their iPads and set up an account, put all my kids in. I just want to save people the time. Don't bother with it. It's a total pain. And I don't maybe it's my filter at my school, but I would send out documents to my kids and then their iPads would go to sleep and they'd turn it back on and the documents gone. So I'm constantly going to my computer to send out stuff to the kids and uh, I've just found that uh, there's better apps for uh, getting you know digitally sending stuff to kids' devices than uh, using ClassFlow. So <laughs> I, I'm sure that we're probably friends with somebody that designed that app, or maybe Alice, I don't know. But uh, I, I, I'm definitely not recommending it. So I want to save people the trouble that I just went through and spending hours of time to get ready with that and have it just be a total flop. Anyway, that's my tip. Don't do don't you that. <laughs> Alice, do you have one that works well? Not off the top of my head, no. How about Apollo, Tim? Try Apollo out. John John Samuelson, cop, contact him. He's got some good stuff. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, thanks again for being on the show, and uh, we appreciate everybody watching us today. Hopefully you got some ideas for your classroom. Hey, thanks, Mom and Dad. Thanks for watching, <laughs> Mom and Dad. Thank you.